Good morning, everyone. My name is Anka Metcalf with TradeOutloud.com, and uh, this is uh, the futures market outlook for the week starting with today, April 1st, and it is 11.03 a.m. Eastern Time. We're going to begin with YM. The weekly chart is uh, a, uh, the weekly chart has developed into a very strong um, base, uh, and we already had a very nice uh, rotation off of this uh, last week's high in the overnight trading session. Thus, right now we are up 258 points, and uh, if we break an, uh, actually the target for today and for the immediate uh, future, the target is into the 26 uh, 226. Uh, 250 area if we digest these prior highs that were developed uh end of february and last year into october we have further room higher into a tradable void that can take the price uh into the 26 670 and even higher into the 26 uh 26 966 is actually the high that was uh that was set on october 1st uh, so this base that we have right here, uh, it is a very strong pattern that promotes price acceleration for higher. So this is not a short zone. This is not a short for day trades. I always like to take my trades in sync with very high time frames, even if I zoom into smaller time frames, two minute, five minute or 15 minute. I don't like to even scalp against the trend. Uh, but that's just a personal preference. The daily chart running into some turbulence into the 200 zone, 200 to 250 is gonna be a bit turbulent here, but if we ran, run over the 200 area, uh, the next target level is going to be into the 26,350 and 26,500. So we have a really nice uh, tradable void moving, moving uh, forward for the Imini Dow. Uh, let's continue with the mini &E S&P 500 and uh, uh, for the chart structure, for the current structure of chart, are, I favor more uh, a run up into the mini &E Dow and mini &E S&P 500. In mini &E S&P 500, and this is a daily chart, let's zoom into, let's zoom out actually to the weekly chart. We have a very nice rotation that happened in the overnight trading session. The price actually gapped up and it ran up right now. We're up 24 point, 0.85% into the mini &E S&P and we're trading into the 28 60 level 2860 to 2875 is a turbulence zone but definitely promotes a uh, higher price targets into the 78 but this is going to be a little tough because we have the prior pivot high from the end of january when the volatility has started and that is going to create bands of resistance off of this level if we continue higher and if we manage to break above these levels uh, then we can see obviously continuation higher into the 29, uh, 2947, which is the prior high that was set last year in September, September 17th. Uh, and the imminent uh, SMP looks for a progression higher. The daily chart, one, two, three bar up into resistance right here. For me, this is still, uh, this uh, as long as we're still holding today's low, we are still holding, uh, we're still holding the uptrend. Uh, for me, I would look for 2820, a break of the 2820 here for a reversal back into the 2800. And this is going to be more of a turbulent zone. But if the price should rotate and come back in uh, into the uh, 2820s level, why the 2820? Well, because we have digested that level for about five days before continuing higher. Friday, uh, so Monday through Friday last week, we have digested and coiled around that 20 area, which means that now it's a shelf of support for a continuation price action. But if we should come back in and retest that 2820 area, we may come in even more. So look for that breach between 2820 and 2800, tw below 2820 and 2800. We may be bearish all the way into the 2775 where we would see another buying opportunity off the 2770 to 2775. Uh, let's continue with uh, NASDAQ and NASDAQ and zoom out on the weekly chart. Uh, NASDAQ getting a little bit of strength today after it had a relative weak morning compared to the Dow, S&P and compared to Russell. So it had a bit more turbulence. Uh, there was some news uh, from Apple this morning and they're, um, um, and, uh, they're dropping the prices in uh, China for about 6%. 
uh, and that made Apple uh, push a little lower. Apple is actually coiling around the 200 SMA, and I see it uh, possibly explode over 192, possibly higher, going back into the 200. The more it coils around this 200 SMA, the more it gains strength, and I see it uh, higher if the market should progress higher. All right, so NASDAQ on the weekly chart, we could see that it had a really nice progression and uh, we had a really nice continuation pattern onto the weekly. The daily chart, again, continuation, we gapped up and continue higher. We still have a tradable void all the way to 75.44. So that is the next projected target level. Now the overnight trading, because and I'm going to refer to the hourly chart, I'm going to take it a bit lower. Now, we made, we have already made new highs into the M&E, S&P, Russell, and uh, the Dow, but we have not made new highs in NASDAQ. And NASDAQ still has to battle the 74.87.5, <clears throat> excuse me. And if we should break above this area, then like I said before, we're going to run into the tradable void to 75.50. So we plenty of uh, room above for a continuation higher. Uh, Russell, uh, let's check out Russell right here and let's take it out, far out to the weekly chart. Weekly rotation and Russell, Russell is still into a turbulent zone. However, it is forming a really nice pullback buy off the 20 SMA in vicinity of the 20 SMA. If you look at the pattern, it could be an inverse head and shoulder with the head being here, right shoulder, left shoulder, and the neckline being into the uh, 1580. A blast over 1580 can potentially have a run up into the 1600 for a more constructive uh, work. Um, and for price progression, a break over 1554 can bring the price back higher into this prior high for a couple of weeks ago into the 1577, 15, uh, 1580. And once we get the blast over this 1580, then uh, 1600 is going to be, uh, 1600 is going to be, uh, you know, right there. But remember that 1600 is going to be like that line in the sand why well because it's tough resistance uh because we also have this prior pivot high but remember last year and this is uh january and march last year we've developed some really strong resistance into this into this zone right here so uh we're, we got to take this one day at a time, this pattern one day at a time. Obviously, Russell is a bit more turbulent, is a bit more um, uh, sensitive, uh, and it's not a smooth ride as it was with the mini Dow S&P and NASDAQ. So uh, as you can see here from the daily chart, we still have resistance into the 1577 level. Um, and we also have this whole entire area from 45 to 77. That is an area of concern. We also have a, a flat 200 simple moving average at the 1588 that is putting selling pressure on price as well. Uh, from the hourly chart, uh, even though uh, obviously Russell is up 10 points on the day, we could see like huge topping tail right here, price residing on the 10 EMA right now. The price has tried to ride this 10 EMA for, for, uh, for a couple of days now. So this is on Thursday. Thursday, it rode the 10 EMA, continue higher. Uh, it tested the 50 and then it rode back up the overnight into the 10 EMA. It's a little bit more complicated. You could see that it has a bit more, um, uh, a bit more turbulence to it than any other index. Uh, let's continue with gold. And uh, in gold, uh, I already have an alert at 1305. Weekly chart does not promote any buys or sells yet. Uh, we're still trading into a chop zone. The only thing that is lifting here is the 20 SMA. And it's also this really nice move that uh, uh, that actually gold has had uh, over the last uh, few months. Uh, and with the bottoming effect that we've had in, uh, uh, in uh, basically, well, August through uh, November of last year. Uh, so the weekly chart may not be ready. Uh, the monthly chart, we just start. The monthly chart will we'll, we'll actually point to a uh, continuation higher only if it trades over uh, 13.25. But before we get there, that may actually represent one of our target levels. Why? Well, because look at the daily chart. The daily chart has a three bar pullback and a doji. And if we rotate above 13.05, I'm going to look at this as a possible buy area. So 1305 will be my buy area. The stop is going to be 
below the 1290, so 1290, just below the 1290, just a few ticks below the 1290. And I'm gonna be looking for targets. The first target I'm, I'm getting for from the four hour, uh, and I'm gonna set it from uh, set it at 1310. We do have the uh, 200 SMA and the 50 SMA right here, and uh, that is going to represent. Uh, a ceiling of resistance at this point. If we navigate safely around and above this area, the further, uh, as we move higher, we're gonna be looking for further targets into the 13, uh, 1315, 1320, and 1325. They're gonna be moving like in five point increments uh, here. All right, so let's check out oil. And uh, we've been trading gold a uh, uh, couple of times last month, and we have done it successfully. So there's no uh, use rushing into uh, into gold. Uh, let's take a quick look at crude on the weekly chart. Uh, crude continues its uh, trajectory higher and digesting uh, digesting these prior lows that were set. Uh, last year, around this time of year, um, well, I would say April, more than uh, March, so February, March, more than April, but we're still trading into uh, into these areas right here. So for we're digesting uh, uh, yesterday's first quarter lows. Uh, we still have a tradable void, uh, and the next targets are into the 6150 level and all the way into the $63 level. So we still can see a progression of price higher. I'm, I would be a little bit concerned here on the daily chart as we're getting very close to this 200 SMA. We may have some uh, turbulence uh, around this area and uh, this may not represent a really uh, good area to leg in, for instance, as a swing trade. For day trading purposes, a little bit extended from the overnight price action. Wait for a pullback into the $60.80 and look for uh, possibly pullback buys along the way. 30-minute uh, base, 15-minute base, I wouldn't go anywhere close a smaller time frame like a 5 or a 2 or a 1 or uh, what have you. So uh, that's what I would look at. Uh, let's take a look at bonds. Uh, and I always get a lot of emails from you guys from bonds. And this is something that we discussed in the trading room today. And let's uh, take it to the weekly chart. A uh, weekly chart, I noticed that we were extended. We um, uh, we made it into a minor resistance level at 150.20, which is deriving from these prior lows from prior price action uh, and uh, from, yeah, from prior price action. If the price should come in into the four, 148 and if 148 is gonna hold because 148 is minor support from this prior high here on December 31st, we actually had a swing here long. Uh, if, we, uh, if we stabilize in this area, we may see a rotation higher that may continue uh, into the uh, back into the 150. And let me tell you what I'm seeing on, on the daily chart. This is the area that I want the price to hold. This is exactly minor support. It's a confluence zone. We have the prior pivot high from December 31st, plus we have the revisit of these two lows right here from back in March. And we also have uh, the 10 exponential moving average. So at this point, I would watch the one hour chart. I would watch the four hour chart. And if we get a rotation, so you can see the four hour chart not looking so healthy because it's just breaching above this 50 SMA. Uh, and the one hour is just testing this, uh, this uh, uh, 200 SMA, but you can see the substantial support that is right here. And we're also into an oversold area uh, on the one hour chart here. So a one hour rotation, maybe I would watch it, but um, I would watch it maybe perhaps if you're uh, listening into this video uh, now on Monday, it is 1117. I would watch it after one o'clock and I would watch it on a four hour base to see how it how it builds up. So uh, right now we still have about 40 minutes left into uh, into this candle. If we get a close above 148.20, then this can be uh, a trade idea that may push the price higher. So a long into the 148.20 contingent on a close into one o'clock into this area, 1 p.m. Eastern. And uh, we're gonna be looking for a target into the 148. Once it gets back into the 148, we're gonna look for a continuation um, of the four hour candle. Uh, for a progression higher. So if we should trade over 149.10, this is gonna be an ad if you should 
decide to take that one hour. So it's still very early on in the game to give you exact uh, parameters for the trade. But if the parameters are going to remain unchanged, like I said, a close over 48.20 into 1 o'clock into one o'clock, 1 p.m. Eastern, uh, will bring more buying pressure to the upside and the stop, the risk for this trade will be below 148, uh, 148.09. All right, uh, let's take a quick look at copper HG. And uh, copper uh, had a really nice run, actually nice gap up in the overnight and fade, but back into the support, into the uh, into the 94. So as you can see here, copper, I was looking for my marker, but I have that in the trading room. Okay, so uh, we can see here that we have resistance in above the, uh, into the 298 zone, and we have support into the 283. This is the daily chart, okay? This is the daily chart. The weekly chart still has a uh, his, still has that topping tail from the fact that you know we we pretty much gapped up and now we faded. So I'm just gonna bring it to your attention very quickly here. So this is t just today's price action. So this is super super early, but definitely we broke above this prior high. So we broke the range above, and we're trying to digest these multi lows right here from last year, from 2018, and also from 2017. This is a very important step because this is the bottoming effect. This this double bottom is the rounding, the, not the rounding effect, but a double bottom effect. And we're lifting, we're trying to lift higher and hold the 283 for a progression higher. From the daily chart, we could see that we uh, on a break of 298, we can actually start progressing higher. And as long as we're trying to find a temporary bottom, the temporary bottom that I'm looking at, and this is, definitely contingent and this is something that i was watching as we were getting into the uh into this early trading session at nine o'clock uh and uh i would have liked to see a 296 by 294 for a trade here base one hour base for progression higher back into this high uh into yeah into this high right here all right, this is all for now thanks so much for tuning in i'll see you guys next time next week with a new video with the market outlook.